It gives me great pleasure to make this short presentation today, looking at Reginald Hagger's extensive research and the resulting publications about the Mason family and their factories and ceramics. Reginald Hagger had a career long interest in the history of the Masons, and it was this subject that also began to interest me as a young ceramics curator in the potteries in the 1980s. I was privileged to know the Haggers and to collaborate with Reginald on exhibition projects at the then City Museum and Art Gallery Stoke-on-Trent. After his departure from Minton's China Works in 1935, Hagger relied on teaching and lecturing and freelance work as an artist and designer to make a living. He also accepted commissions as a researcher and writer, and it was this which led to his long-standing relationship with the Goddard family, the then owners of the former Ashworth's Mason's Ironstone factory in Hanley. The bicentenary in 1952 of the birth of Miles Mason, founder of the Mason's business, was the catalyst for a commissioned history of the firm. Reginald Hagger did not know at the time how deeply he would become involved with all aspects of Mason's historic productions, the factory owners' family histories, and the growing group of collectors of ceramics that became his lifelong friends. This is my copy of the Masons of Lane Delph, given to me by Reginald, and with the dust jacket showing the Mason family portrait of about 1800, which is now in the Raven Mason collection that I curate at Keeley University. Reginald Hagger was methodical in all that he did, and his approach to research included impeccable note-taking in his beautiful artist's hand, along with illustrations and drawings, filed in alphabetical ring binders. He explained to me once that if you draw something, it makes you look and remember in a way that you do not otherwise do, and I can say that I've found this to be true. Pre-digital technology meant that Reginald had to describe documents, newspaper notices and maps into his notes, for which I will ever be grateful as this gives a clear and immediate picture of how useful or otherwise a reference or source is. Reginald kept a complete ring binder for his research on the Masons. This represents quite a high proportion of his notes, reflecting the importance to him of this factory and that it represented as he described in his teaching and writing, a case study of a typical medium to large scale business in the potteries in the 19th and 20th centuries. In the pages seen here, he transcribes newspaper notices, records elements of patterns and trademarks, reproduces sections of maps of the potteries from 1802 and 1832, and records a precise technical drawing of an early 19th century mason teapot reminding us that he had spent some years himself as a designer and art director in the ceramics industry. Reginald Hagger's quest to discover and record the history of the Mason family and business led to a travel odyssey with Dorothy, his wife, seeking out places and recording them, not using photography, but in the way that a watercolour artist would, in watercolours. The Haggis travelled several times to what was northwest Yorkshire, now Cumbria, to Dentdale, where the Masons were well-to-do farmers and landowners. Reginald found the place of Miles Mason's birth at West House, painted in 1950, and painted views of the village of Dent. In Lane Delph, in Staffordshire Potteries, the Victoria works and the house attached were still extant and recorded in watercolour in 1951. Sadly, these no longer exist. The Haggers remained in North Staffordshire throughout their long marriage, except for a short time living in Peel on the Isle of Man. The end of their lives were spent in a nursing home at Wetley Rocks, Wetley Abbey, a Staffordshire Gothic, Gothic with a K, gentleman's home built by George Miles Mason, the second son of Miles and Ruth Mason in the 1830s. Following his first book about the Masons, Reginald Hagger's research activity continued to reveal much more detail about the factories and their various owners. In the 1950s and 60s, Hagger's relationship with Keele University had become firmly established and his extramural students were following research projects of their own. In the 1970s, one of these students was Elizabeth Adams, 
wife of Watership, Watership Down author Richard Adams. Elizabeth began to discover more information about the Masons and to acquire ceramic wares made by them. She was a talented researcher and writer in her own right, and Hagger and Adams became another volume of note about the Masons. Mrs Adams had different collecting tastes, however. She mainly acquired London porcelains for her own collection, and her Masons acquisitions managed to find their way into the Haggers collection. I must also note here, in the interests of fairness, that other works about the Masons are also available, and that the richness of Masons factory history was mined by prolific ceramics author Geoffrey Godden on several occasions. Reginald Haggers publications are far more wide ranging than monographs on ceramics. He produced works of reference that remained in print for many years, such as his concise encyclopedias of English and continental ceramics and his dictionary of art terms in architecture, sculpture, painting and in the graphic arts. My own relationship with the Haggers began when I joined the staff at the museum in Hanley, the former City Museum and Art Gallery. One of my first tasks was to manage the exhibition project, Mason, a Family of Potters, in 1982. In preparation for this, the catalogue was written collaboratively and became one of my first publications on the Masons, and one of Reginald Hagger's last. Exhibitions were a good opportunity to research and publish new information about the history of ceramics, and a series of projects with the Northern Ceramic Society and the Masons Collectors Club was highly productive. Reginald Hagger was himself a founder member, committee member and officer of both from 1972 until his death in 1988. Importantly for the museum, the Haggers made the decision to donate their ceramics collections ahead of the 1982 exhibition. And during the previous summer, Pat Harpenny and I took a van by ferry to the Isle of Man and filled it with their precious pots. Dorothy could no longer speak following a road accident in 1961, but she could supervise the packing expertly, cook meals for all of us and choose plenty of good wine. The most comprehensive listing of Reginald Haggard's published works was compiled by Rodney Hampson and published by the Northern Ceramic Society in 2005, at the time of a major exhibition at the Potteries Museum about Reginald Hagger, the man and his work. In 1997, I produced a bibliography of Hagger's Mason's publications in collaboration with Dr. Peter Stovin, published in the catalogue of the Raven Mason collection by Keele University. Rodney Hampson was a long-standing student of Reginald Hagger's and employee of Keele University, and is himself a prolific author on the history of the potteries. Hampson's bibliography includes all the known works by Reginald Hagger, including his first work, Recent Ceramic Sculpture in Great Britain, written in 1946. A Century of Art Education in the Potteries dates from about 1953, and the vastly important section on the Staffordshire pottery industry in the Victoria County History, co-authored with Arnold Mountford, appeared in 1967. Outside the realm of art and ceramics, Reginald Hagger illustrated Percy M. Young's works, The Football Year in 1956 and 58, and Music and Its Story in 1960. He was a regular contributor to the Evening Sentinel, Staffordshire Life and Pottery Gazette, in addition to national art journals. The publications of the Northern Ceramic Society, the Masons Collectors Club, the English Ceramic Circle and the Wedgwood Society regularly, regularly carried contributions by Reginald Hagger and he expertly acted as editor for the NCS and the Masons Collectors Club. In the time available to me, I can only give a flavour of the value of Reginald Hagger's pioneering published work. I've benefited from this greatly in my career and from the unpublished information that is to be found in his notebooks and diaries. But most of all, I had the privilege of listening to Reginald Hagger lecturing in his inimitable way and to have had many conversations with him that opened my eyes to the value of diligent research and methodical, accurate recording of information. 
Reginald was always ready to encourage young people in their work and was never haughty or above framing sensible answers to what I now realise were often simplistic questions from me. I'm indebted to the committee of the Reginald Hagger Lecture Fund for the opportunity to make this presentation and to all donors to the Lecture Fund who allow us to continue to present lectures in Reginald Hagger's name each year.